consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Maybe you know how the general was killed. My dear Blor, can't you read? Eight little Indian boys traveling in Thanks again, to you our viewers, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Great, sir. One of us is Mr. O. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us way back to 1933 for a Columbia movie, Before Midnight. This is the first of four Inspector Trent movies. Until TV destroyed the market for B-movies, studios were always trying to launch new B-movie series with different characters. And most of these attempts failed badly, not because of the weak storylines, but because the main characters just were not very interesting. If a series failed to grab an audience, it was usually because the main character was in no way distinctive. That's why the Inspector Trent series lasted just four movies. But that's longer than many series lasted. Flash Casey, The Roving Reporters, many others did not last even four movies. Inspector Trent is played by Ralph Bellamy. He was born in Chicago in 1904. He ran away from home at the age of 15 and immediately found work in a traveling repertoire company and he was an actor ever since. He began his movie career in 1931 and worked steadily through the 1940s. He worked mostly in television beginning in the 1950s. His final movie role was in the 1990 classic Pretty Woman. He died in 1991 at the age of 87. In tonight's movie, a man tells Inspector Trent that he thinks he's about to be murdered, and of course, he is murdered, and Inspector Trent has lots of suspects. Let's return to 1933 and enjoy Before Midnight. on that, Chief. A what? A promotion. Why, that was a tough case. Listen, Sherlock. When I was young, patrolmen on the beat solved cases like this. Yes, they did. Did you ever hear of the Arnold case? Everybody's heard of that case. Kind of hazy in my mind. There was a tough case. Problems? Boy. When a man solved a mystery like that, he doesn't ask for a promotion. He gets it automatically. Sit down. Thanks. I'll give you more clues to figure with than the man who solved the case had. And when I get through, you still won't know the real motive for the murder. Well, let's hear it. 
was a little town about 50 miles from New York called Forest Lake. As they say in books, it was a great night for a murder. How long do I have to wait? I tell you, this place is getting on my nerves. I don't think you'll have to wait much longer. Well, hurry up. I can't get out of here soon enough. will be relieved to know that you have come. Uh, I am John Fry, his secretary. Uh, I'll tell him that you are here. But your life won't be worth a plug nickel if you do. Well, I've warned you. And stay away this time, I'll... Well, this is the last. Go on, call Trent. Pleasure to have one of the best detectives in the country for this case. Thanks. What's the trouble? Somebody wants to kill me. What makes you think that? I've been warned in the most peculiar way. I don't want you to think I'm a superstitious old idiot, but come. I'll show you. This is my great-grandfather. He was murdered. But the night before he was killed, there was found under this portrait a pool of blood. Last night, I had reason to come down here. Before I got into the room, I heard a noise. In the dim light, I saw a figure here. 
Was it a man or a woman? I couldn't tell. I cried out, and the figure vanished. Immediately, I thought of the superstition. I switched on the lights. And I found that. A pool of blood. Fresh blood. According to that, you're due to die today. Exactly. Oh, come in, Janet, please, dear. Mr. Trent? My ward, Janet Holt. How do you do? How do you do? What do you make of all this, Mr. Trent? Well, I don't believe in ghosts. There must be something to it. Why, at night, this house seems to become alive. Who's living here? We three. Mrs. Fry, a Japanese houseboy, a maid, and a housekeeper. Do you know any reason why anyone would want to kill you? None. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to stay by my side every minute. I want you to find out what's going on in this house. I'm not taking any chances. Oh, there's one other thing I want to show you. This is the other part of the superstition. This clock has been in the family for generations. It's been the duty of the head of the house to wind it every night. What has it to do with the superstition? Less than a minute before the murder of the heads of this house, that clock stops. showing Mr. Trent the clock. Oh, the death clock. stands talking for fully 15 minutes about being murdered and you want me to believe he died of heart failure? Yes. Death was caused by fright. This superstition. When the clock stopped, he was seized with fear and having a weak heart, it killed him. How do you know he had a weak heart? Why, he was under my treatment. Marvis Fry? Yes. Going somewhere, Mr. Fry? I was going to call the sheriff's office. I'll phone the sheriff's office myself. Leave everything just as it is. I don't want anyone to leave the house. Emergency call. Get me the sheriff's office. Where was Mr. Arnold during the past hour? Uh, in this room, sir. Mr. Graham, his banker, was here. I saw him. Hello. Sheriff's office? Inspector Trent, New York Detective Bureau. Edward Arnold is dead. I'll be here. Is it a 
accustomed to have incense burning in this house? Oh, well, yes. Have you got a key to this room? Yes. Would you mind letting me have it? No. I'm going to keep this room sealed. Why seal the room, Trent? Because I don't believe in superstitions. Clock stopping was a mere coincidence. I'll find that out as I go along. And you don't believe that he died of heart failure? I hate to contradict you, Doctor, but my observation has been with heart failure, the victim is seized suddenly, and the death comes almost immediately. That's right. I noticed in this case, before you entered the house, and a few minutes before Arnold's death, he seemed highly exhilarated, as if he were experiencing some strange sensation. Poison? Exactly. Then you mean... I mean that Arnold was murdered. How could it be murder? What about the skin puncture the coroner found on the left arm, Sheriff? Might be an insect bite. No. A hypodermic needle. Doc. Yes? Yeah? Perform an autopsy. All right. Stubby meet Inspector Trent. Not the Trent. Yeah, and I want you to work with him. Yes, sir. I'll be with you in a moment. Doctor, in your treatment of the dead man, have you been giving hypodermics? Why, uh, uh, yes. Where? In the left arm. Thanks. All right, you can all go to your rooms now. When I get back from town, I want to have a talk with each one of you individually. David, he... Don't let anybody out of the house. No, sir. Who do you think murdered Arnold? I'm not sure it's murder yet, Stubby. Uh, don't kid me. You wouldn't be up here if it wasn't. Now, here comes the doc. Well? Cyanide of potassium. Where? Injected. In the bloodstream. Did you find any skin puncture other than the one on the left arm? None. That looks bad for Doc Marsh. Not necessarily. Any man can use a hypodermic needle. Come on, Stubby. We're going to work. Okay, Chief. Here. All but the doctor. You let him go? We well, had a patient to see. Check on that. Call everyone. Tell them to wait in there. I'll see Mr. Fry first. Yes, sir. You want to see me? Yes. I uh, understand Mr. Arnold came here from China about a year ago. Yes, he spent 35 years in China. And made a large fortune? Yes. Who inherits it? I don't know. You should know. You're his secretary. Well, I've never read the will. Who's his attorney? Uh, Howard Smith, a cousin. You and Mr. Arnold were close friends, weren't you? Yes. Very close. Yes. What brought about this strong attachment? I nursed him from death. When was this? About 15 years ago, on a trading trip. He got yellow fever. And what did you do for him? I gave him the usual treatment. 
An injection? Oh, so you gave him injection? No, I didn't. You just said you did. Well, I mean the doctor who was taking care of him did. All right, Mr. Fry, that's all. For now. Mr. Trent would like to talk to you now. Don't look at me like that. I didn't do it. Would you sit down, Miss Janet? Thank you. Miss Janet, you want this thing solved, don't you? Of course. You don't mind a few questions? How did Mr. Arnold happen to become your guardian? Mr. Arnold knew my mother when she was a girl. When he first came here, he looked me up to see if there wasn't something he could do for me. I was a typist, so he had me do some typing for him on a book he was writing about China. Mr. Arnold became attached to me and asked me to live here. I see. And your folks, where are they? Dad died when I was ten. Mother passed away recently. Do you know how much your guardian is leaving you? No. How long have you and the doctor known each other? About a year. I assume you're in love with each other. How is it you've never married? That's rather personal, isn't it, Mr. Trent? Sorry, Miss Janet. Any clue is apt to lead me in the right direction. That's true. I'm sorry. Dave and I didn't marry because Mr. Arnold disliked Dave. But you don't suspect him, do you? I suspect everyone. Why, Dave, of all people? Mr. Arnold was killed by a hypodermic injection. Then you'd better look elsewhere for your murderer, Mr. Trent. What do you mean? Mrs. Fry. I've seen her use one of those things. What things? A hypo? What do you know about her? She hated Mr. Arnold. They were always quarreling. About what? I don't know. I never could make out what it was about. You've been very helpful, Miss Janet. I'm much obliged to you. Did you send for me? Yes, Mrs. Fry. Well, here I am. Won't you sit down? You came here from China about three weeks ago. Yes. Why? To see my husband. Your attachment must have been very strong to travel several thousand miles just to see him. It is. Arnold was giving you a check for $5,000. That's right. Why was he giving you that much money? Because my husband asked him. That's partly right. But the real reason is because he wanted to get rid of you, because there is no love between you and your husband. All right. You know. And since you do, I hate him. And what of it? Mrs. Fry, I understand you know how to use a hypodermic. Suppose I do. Arnold was killed by an injection of poison. You want money, that's why you came here. And if your husband were to inherit some from Arnold, you might get your fingers on it. Listen, Mr. Detective. If you're trying to pin this murder on me, you're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe I am. But you were leaving the house just before the murder was committed. Why? I had a hunch a murder would be committed. What caused that hunch? I haven't the least idea. All right. Kono, is it a custom in this house to have incense burning? No, no, about incense. Who burns incense here? The master. He bring incense burner here from China. He light them. University man, huh? 
You can drop the pigeon English. Very smart, Mr. Trent. So you didn't light the incense? No, Mr. Trent. I did not light the incense on the Buddha. The Buddha? There are four different kinds of burners in this house. Why do you say the Buddha one? Connor, you lit that Buddha burner. Yes. Yes, I did it. And why did you lie to me? Well, I didn't want to become involved in the murder. Who told you to light it? The master. Every evening I light it for him. The odor is pleasant to his senses. It is a habit he acquired in the Orient. Did you ever light the incense on the Buddha before? Yes, sir. No, you didn't. That's a new burner. There's never been a stick of incense burned on it before. I polish it to make it look like new. Kono, I think you're a liar. Thank you. That's all. For now. The maiden housekeeper still waiting? Yes. You can go back to your work. I have no questions now. So, our attorney friend has turned housebreaker. What's that? Just a book. It must be interesting to cause you to break in a window to get it. Let's have a look. I said, let me see it. The diary. Written by a woman. What's that? He went out there. Who? I don't know. It was too dark. Take a look. Okay, kid. Whose room is this? Arnold's. How was it you came here? I heard a noise. My room is next to this one. I thought I'd investigate. 
There was a man in here. I started to scream. He grabbed me. What did he look like? I, I couldn't tell. It was too dark. Oh, my head is splitting from the shock. All right, you better take care of it. Doc was visiting a patient. What happened here? There was something in here somebody wanted and got. What was it? I don't know. Stubby? Yes, sir. Watch that fry woman. Don't let her out of your sight. Okay, Chief. And the poison was injected into the bloodstream. Are you sure of that? That was the coroner's report. The only skin puncture was on the left arm, and it was made by a hypodermic needle. I made that puncture, Trent. It would be ridiculous of me to pretend I didn't. But why were you so certain he died of heart failure? Well, I knew he had a weak heart. Exactly, Doctor. And the man who murdered him knew he had a weak heart. The amount of poison showed that. But I had no reason to kill him. That's the rub, Doctor. You had a perfectly good reason for killing him. What do you mean? Janet. Why Janet? Arnold was opposed to your marriage to the girl. You quarreled about it. That's not true. It is true. Janet told me so herself. You win. He even went so far as to offer me money to keep away from her. Why? He said I wasn't worthy of her, but that wasn't it. The real reason was jealousy. He didn't want to lose her. I hated him, and I'm not sorry that he's dead. But I swear I didn't kill him. Doctor, you know that it's impossible for two injections to be made at exactly the same spot. Now, you admit making that puncture. Under the circumstances... You mean I'm under arrest? You're a professional man, Doctor. I'm not going to arrest you. But I want you to stay in town until this case is settled. You have my word. I'll be at your call any time. Thanks. case going? Fair. I understand Arnold had some money on deposit here. Yes. How much? Why, almost a million, I should say, offhand. Graham, I've learned that this bank is rather shaky. Well, we are having a little difficulty, but everybody knows about it. Why? If Arnold had withdrawn his money and placed it with a more substantial bank, it would have put you in rather a bad spot, wouldn't it? What do you mean? Didn't you threaten Arnold's life? Why? Why should I threaten Arnold's life? He was going to remove his money and ruin you. You're wrong, Trent. We quarreled about nothing serious. He... He was going to make a bad investment. I don't I... believe you. Also, you were with him a few minutes before he was murdered. Are you insinuating I had something to do with his murder? I'm not insinuating anything. I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Edward Arnold. Get me the sheriff's office. Trent, you've arrested Harry Graham. Yes. Well, he's the most prominent man in town. You don't think he did it? Well, if he didn't, the fact that we've arrested him might make the real murderer a little careless. If he did do it, we have him. It still looks like the doc to me. Sheriff, what would you say if we hadn't found the puncture on the left arm of the murdered man? Arnold would still be alive. No. Arnold would still be a murdered man. But we know the poison was injected into the blood. Yes. Well, if it wasn't done with a hypodermic in the arm, how was it done? That's it. How? Come in. Mr. Trent? Here. 
Sign here, please. Thank you. What is it, Chief? The most interesting and surprising news of the case. A clue from Shanghai. For the time being, a secret. Wait here for a telephone call, Stubby. I wonder what that said. It was from China. What's that got to do with it? Well, that makes it Chinese to me. Hello, how's everything? All quiet, Chief. They must be in. Been watching the place very closely and no one's left. Well, I'll wake them. Is the great news? Sit down. Mr. Arnold. You've got the name twisted, Mr. Trent. Arnold is dead. No, Fry is dead. You are Edward Arnold. But you're mistaken. No, Arnold. When Mrs. Fry saw the dead man, she called out John. And he was known by the name of Edward. That started me thinking. I don't understand. Well, maybe you can understand this. I knew something was wrong, so I cabled to Shanghai and got a description of both of you. Trent, you're right. I am Edward Arnold. Why did you two men change identities? Because of the superstition. Every day I feared that I would be the next. The fear haunted me. Fry thought that by changing identities, it would break the curse. He was my best friend. That is why he took my name for me. Did Fry think he'd be murdered? No. He didn't believe in it. He called it the silly superstition. But as long as I live, I will be tortured knowing I sent him to his death. That murderer killed him, thinking he was killing me. Do you think the murderer will try to get you when he finds out he's killed the wrong man? That is what I am afraid of. That is why it must never be known that I am the real Edward Arnold. At first I thought it was superstition. But now I know there is a murderer loose. Trent, find that killer and I'll make you rich. We'll talk about that later. Stubby, you see that test tube? What is it? 
That's a specimen of blood taken from the body of the murdered man, John Fry. There's another one. This don't mean a thing to me, Chief. That's a specimen I took from underneath the portrait. And the strange thing is that the blood in both tubes is from the same man. What? Both Fry's blood? Yes. But the blood was under the picture before Fry was killed. Fry had a very good reason for making the sign of the superstition. He put it there himself. He put his own blood... Why? That's something to find out. The more you learn about this, the less I know. You sent for me? Yes, Senator. Let's sit down. Smith, the attorney, was just here. I suppose you're wondering how much the will leaves you? What makes you say that? Well, you... you expected something, didn't you? Do you think I came to live here just because I might inherit money from him? It would be sad if your love for Arnold was just a monetary one. Then it wouldn't make any difference if he didn't leave you anything? No. There's no reason why he should leave me anything. He's already given me more than I ever had in my life. After Father died, life was nothing but struggle and poverty. I found a different world here. Janet, you almost persuade me that you really cared for him. It isn't like you to say that. But how could you love him when he was always trying to break the love between you and Dr. Marsh? That hurt. But I can understand it. He became so attached to me that he just didn't want David to take me away. It was a case of loving something too much, I guess. But you were also against my marrying. And do you hate me for it? Why should I? Then let us say that I, too, loved you too much to want anyone to marry you and take you away. Janet, the will of Edward Arnold leaves to you practically his entire fortune. the idea of stopping here? The idea is that the murder what done happened hasn't made me feel any friendly to that house. And this is as far as I go. Come on, Stubby. All right. Yes, thank you, sir. Any visitors? Haven't seen a soul. Well, what do we do now, Chief? I'm going to have another look about that den. Stop or I'll shoot. Well, this is a surprise. What do you want in this room, Kuno? Speak up or I'll arrest you for murder. I didn't do it. Well, then who did? 
I can settle this case right here with a bullet. No, no, Mr. Trent. I'll tell. I'll tell. Chief! What's up? Someone got Kono. Yes, I know that he's dead. Go on back to the house. Get everyone downstairs. Don't let anybody in or out. Okay, Chief. Everybody. Upstairs. Get them down here and send them in there. Dr. Marsh is in the music room. I'll get him. Where's Dr. Marsh? In the music room. But that Trent wants everyone in the living room. Oh, thank you. wanted downstairs. Well, what does he want? Hello, Phil. Hello, David. Trent wants to see us in the library. Yes, I know. He sent for me. Yes? You're wanted downstairs, Mr. Fry. Attorney for the estate. What are you doing here now? I came here to see Miss Janet about the will of the late Mr. Arnold. I see. been killed. He got a knife in his back just as he was going to name the murderer. All right, you can all go now. Stubby. I'm beginning to believe there's a ghost myself.
There's something in that room Kona was after. And it might solve this riddle. Call the sheriff's office and report this. Yes, sir. What's on your mind? Plenty. I've been doing some pretty tall thinking about that diary, Mr. Scheister. And when I learned Arnold was leaving everything to Janet, it came to me. What a pretty little blackmail scheme you and my husband thought up. He thought up? I planned a little scheme myself. And you thought my husband was double-crossing you, so you killed him. That's a lie. Don't start acting with me. It won't get you anywhere. Either you play my way or I'll spill the whole story to that detective. What do you want? The diary. So that you won't double-cross me. Take your choice. The diary or the detective. Gun on me. I'm playing square with you. It might be a good idea to keep on playing it that way. If you don't want to hang for murder. Take it easy, sister. Go ahead, Jack. Well, what do you want? This is what I want. Oh. Don't be foolish. A long heel do for her, Jack. This is as far as you go, sister. Anything? Yeah, a gun and a book. You got the book from him. Great. That's good work. So you better report back to station. Yeah. Does it tell you anything, Chief? 
Just the motive for the killing, that's all. Does it tell you who the murderer is? No, but it gives me a pretty good idea. If I only knew how he was murdered. It was poison. Yes, but how was it injected into the body and where? You don't think it was a hypo in the arm? No, it was cleverer than that, Stubby. Oh, you mean it was something that worked like a hypo, but wasn't one? Now you're getting bright. Yeah, but, but what was it? That's what I can't figure out. Kono knew the answer. But he died with it. I've examined everything and I can't find out what Kono came here for. <laughs> this you're a sticker, Chief. Stubby, what causes a person to spill ink on a desk? Why, a pen. Why? Too full, I guess. Exactly. And it's too full when it's just been filled. Here it is. What? The instrument of death. Well, I'm... Call Arnold. Arnold? You don't think he did it? Maybe and maybe not. We'll soon find out. Okay, Chief. Chief wants to see it downstairs. Sorry to bother you on a rather trivial matter. That's all right, Trent. You said if I found the murderer of Fry, you'd pay me well. I never meant anything more in my life. How about $5,000? I'll give you twice that amount. Five's enough. May I have half the check now? Yes. And the other half when you have named the murderer. Uh, my checkbook is in my room. Uh, here's a checkbook. I found it while I was looking about. All right. Forgotten. Fill this one. Who lit that incense? Why, I did. You can't smell anything, Arnold. Incense kills the aroma of that particular poison. Don't worry, you're not going to die. I removed the poison from the needle of the self-pilling lever. What's that? The other half. For finding the murderer. 
There's no use going any further with this, Trent. I sent Kono for this. When he started to talk, I stopped him. If you'd have gone 20 feet further, when you chased me, you would have found the secret passage I used back to the house. I killed Kono. I killed Fry. And if I'd had a little longer, I would have killed that lawyer, Smith. He was back up Fry, putting his own blood under that portrait. They had the signature to my bank account. They were going to wipe me out and then murder me. But you haven't told me the real reason for killing Fry. Well, that is the truth, I tell you. That is why I did it. He betrayed my friendship. Ever see that before? Yes. There's the diary of Janet's mother. And it contains the real motive for the killing, Janet. After Fry had disposed of you, he was going to blackmail Janet for her inheritance. But it must never be known, Trent. It would ruin her life, her happiness. I'm sorry, Arnold. When you're brought to trial for murder, it'll all come out. Nothing can stop it. But there can't be a trial. Do you understand, Trent? I can't be tried. I understand, and I wish I could help you, but I can't. I've got to arrest you. I'll get stubby now. And that is the story of the Arnold murder case. What did Arnold have to do with the diary? That diary was written by Janet's mother. Arnold was Janet's father, without benefit of clergy. Oh. Why did Fry and Arnold change identities? Arnold's sense of honor wouldn't permit him to reveal his, well, unconventional fatherhood to Janet. Yet he wanted the love of his daughter. But he wanted it because of himself and not his money. So, he let Fry be the rich man. What happened to the girl? She married the doctor. And as they say in books, they lived happily ever after. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Maybe you know how the general was killed. My dear Bloor, can't you read? Eight little Indian boys traveling in Thanks again, to you our viewers. 
for your kind support that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Great, sir. One of us is Mr. Owen. Exciting story, The Dark Corner, which gripped the readers of Good Housekeeping magazine, now spins its fascinating plot on the screen. These are the players who bring you this widely discussed story of an obsession for beauty that becomes a passion for murder. He loathed her rather intimately, I'm afraid. But he couldn't. I mean, she's too old for him. Love is not the exclusive province of adolescence, my dear. It's a heart ailment that strikes all age groups. Like my love for you. The Dark Corner dares to tell of those who can defy the rules of respectability and the hunted who must violate the law in order to live. What's his name? Who's paying you? If you don't want to lose that stardust look in your eyes, get going while the door's still open. You stick around here, you'll get grafters, shysters, two-bit thugs, and maybe worse. Maybe me. I like those odds. I'll take them. see the best of them right here. Black and white murder mysteries from the 1930s and 40s on Hastings Mystery Theater. <laughs>